Hi, it's Helen Godden here. And yes, we're in isolation at home, so we thought we'd bring the camera outside and do a bit of filming in the great outdoors, as it were, of my backyard. So one of the positives of this isolation is being able to spend more time with my daughter. Um, she's very creative as well, and we've been um, doing some new things together. So I thought I'd introduce you to my daughter, who's normally behind the camera, but today she's gonna join me and show us um, a bit of the new technique that she's been trying, and you might be interested to see what she's, um, what she's up to. So I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Inika. Hi everyone. <laughs> this is her, the mini me. So um, Inika has been up to doing um, some lino cuts lately. So she's going to explain to us what lino cuts are and show you a new project that we're working on. So basically what is, what is lino cutting, sweetheart? So a lino cut traditionally is a piece of lino board and you use carving tools and you use these to carve into the lino and you can see here that I use the tools to carve into those gaps and carve away what I want to be white and I'm leaving right. what I want to be black. So it's so, the opposite of drawing. Yeah, right. So you're taking away the negative and leaving behind the positive, yeah. which is going to be black. So let's just have a little look at that daisy there. So you take away the inside because you want the daisy to print white, white which is the white of the paper. Mm. When we say white, you're presuming the, the colour that you're printing onto. Underneath. Okay. Yeah. So, but this is actually, yeah, it's quite flexible. Mm. And so that was quite easy to carve. Super easy, much because I've carved lino as well. Yeah. Well, I remember doing lino cuts back at high school and uh, the classic was you'd be working away and then, ah, and you've cut your finger pretty badly. Yeah. So this is a lot better to work with. And then what's, um, what's this little steamroller? That's the roller. <laughs> and um, so you use the ink. I use Lumiere paint, black mm -hmm. Lumiere paint, and I mix it with um, printing ink medium and so mm -hmm. you mix the two together equal portions of each so i think that's so that it doesn't dry out so quickly that's exactly right right yeah. okay and you know what that's called that squeaky thing no it's called a brayer it's a brayer a brayer right. so you use the brayer to roll into the ink and the ink is quite sticky and you try and make really fine little mm. inky bits so you just want a really fine even delivery of that ink so it's just on that surface ready to then be printed Print. onto paper or whatever yeah. you want to print onto. Exactly. Okay. So what sort of subject matter have you um, carved so far? So I love flowers and I love florals and poppies especially. Can we show them this one? Yep. So this one is another poppy design. And then I decided to cut it out with a little bumblebee <laughs> and some blackberries and things. I love it. So that was really fun. But you've always loved poppies, oh, haven't yeah. you? So oh, this is from 2019. This is something that Inika painted with acrylic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with acrylic paint. Um, she's always been fairly obsessed with flowers. I mean, what a beautiful subject matter. But I also have been doing a few kind of naked ladies in Ooh. forests and Ooh. things like that. <laughs> so what do you call that one? This is Cactus Girl. Cactus Girl. Cactus Girl. And this side, she's the Jungle Queen. Jungle Queen. queen I love, jungle. this is great. See all that line work you can get into there with, with the carved lines on mm. the lino or the rubber in this case. So you've actually got two on that one. Yeah, so um, you can use both sides. Huh, well that's pretty cool. It's, of each. It's kind of heavy stuff. It is kind yeah. of heavy. So then, once that's inked up, you then put it on the paper the really paper. carefully and then what you you roll it with the roller to press it down to press it down uh -huh. and then you print it and you carefully like lit right we've so, got a little video of that too oh okay we can pop that in so let's just go back to the flower one here's the flower one so what mm -hmm. have you printed from so that this was on paper so we have it on pink which i thought was quite hmm. nice on the pink yeah this is all the same print then you've got it with some inks distress inks Different uh, colour distress inks. There's, all, there's four different colours in there that I blotched on there just randomly like and it. then mm. printed it. But okay. it's quite a grainy effect. Yeah. And then this one I did on music paper. Old music sheets. Which was really okay, fun. Okay, that is nice. And then to show Ooh, you. There's our, um, was it Jungle Queen? Yeah, Queen of the Jungle. Queen of the Jungle. That is her there and that's in the distress inks as well. So that's all greens and blues. Yeah. So then of course mum steps in and says, hey sweetheart, why don't we print them on fabric? Very pretty. So these are some of the ones we've printed on some hand dyed batik fabric. So we've got a little matching pair here of the poppy and of the flowers. The flowers. You've got another matching set here of the two naked ladies. Woohoo! 
And you've got more flowers and poppies. This is actually a piece of Ricky Tim's hand dye. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, it is nice. Gorgeous. Okay, but what could you do with those in the car? I wasn't sure what you'd do with them. I, I just thought they were pretty on the wall, but what do you think? Well, I've started doing some um, slow stitching, some hand embroidery in there. That's nice. I think that's going to look nice. I've even gone with a, a long straight stitch around the edge. We'll give you a still shot of this in a minute. So I'm going to do a pair of those. Then I'm also thinking of painting into something like this with my ink tense pencils and then quilting it. Okay, so then we're creating blocks that could be used for a mini wall hanging or a series of them that could become a quilt. Um, so we're sort of bursting with ideas at the moment. We're thinking that some of these that are in pairs, we'd like to offer them to you to purchase. Mm. Okay, so I'll put up all different images of what we've got there as pairs. Oh, check this one out. This one a little bit of cave. Oh, I love a bit of cave. That's awesome. I love cave. Yes, yeah, she does. She's a bit obsessed. <laughs> oh, my cave has moved from my stash to her stash. <laughs> <laughs> that does look good. Now that I'm thinking with a bit of Malumi Air paint because that'll mm. be quite bright and solid and uh, it can compete with the cave as such, mm. you know. Now this one's lovely. This is the Jungle Girl and we've printed that on the actually on the back of the fabric. If you look at the, it's a very old um, Sheridan design mm. piece of sheeting. Looks a bit like William Morris. It is a very, I think actually the design was called William Morris. That's a good call, sweetheart. But we decided on the wrong side, it gave it a paler backdrop for this, but we loved all the fact that it was, you know, jungle-like, etc. So I think she looks awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely. I might quilt that one. And then this is, where's that little one that you did? There's a little block somewhere here. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so this is a very small little block she did. Okay, but then we printed that four times. It's a lotus flower, mm -hmm. okay? So that would be gorgeous as a cushion or the panel of a bag, etc. So these are what we're looking at um, offering up to you. It's a bit of an experiment to see if you like the idea of it. Um, those of you that do make a purchase, we really want you to get on and do something with them so we can see all the different ideas that people are going to have, all the variations. So let us know what you think. Thanks very much. This is inspiration and education. We this can do that together. So this is education. And inspiration. From Helen Gordon. Dot com. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye.